Panda! Hello! I'm Alex, also known as Mr. Panda. And I'm Tifa, also known as Crystal Dragon. And we are the Pandas at Play! And today we're going to be sharing some of our panda picks. Pandas picks. Pandas picks. We wanted to do something special for the Nintendo Switch's one year anniversary. Happy, Happy one, one year, year anniversary, anniversary Nintendo, Nintendo Switch. Switch! Yeah, the Switch has had a phenomenal launch year and we wanted to talk about some of our favorite games in a fun way. The Nintendo Switch Launch Year Awards! Yay. We're gonna have some categories, you know, like what you might find in an awards show. And we're gonna share our favorite picks for each category. Yep. So, let's go ahead and get started. So our first category is Best On The Go Game. The Nintendo Switch is great for portability. It's easy to take anywhere, and I take it everywhere. This category is for the best game to be playing on the go, like when you're on a lunch break, or on a train commute. In the car, on a long car ride. Yeah, or on, or a, on plane. a plane. Yeah. So my favorite game to play on the go is Stardew Valley. It's such an easy to play relaxing game, and I just feel like I can always make progress no matter what I'm doing, even if it's just doing some little farming stuff, or mining, or fishing. It's just a really engaging game. Um, and then I can easily just quit out when I need to do something else. So my pick for best on the go game was Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And we actually did play this on the go. One time we were in a restaurant with some friends. We we're like, hey, let's all play some Mario Kart. So we set up the Switch screen, you know, put out the kickstand, grab some Joy-Cons, and we started racing, just like in those commercials. So it was pretty awesome. Our next category is most nostalgic game on the Switch. So my pick is I Am Setsuna by Tokyo RPG Factory because uh, it's a throwback to classics like Chrono Trigger on the SNES and it brings up a lot of those kind of, you know, old gameplay mechanics and sort of the top-down view of everything. So I thought that was pretty cool. It's extra! extra. <laughs> <laughs> so my pick for most nostalgic game is Ukulele. Yeah which is Banjo-Kazooie. It's basically Banjo-Kazooie. It's made by Playtonic Games. The ukulele just felt like a classic N64 throwback game. And I really loved those growing up, so I was excited to play another one. And it has its flaws, but I still enjoyed my time with Yuka and Laylee. Yeah. My favorite chameleon and bad people. <laughs> my favorite. So the next category is most surprising game on the Switch for its launch year. And uh, I have a big one in mind. Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. So that idea just came out of nowhere. But I like that Mario is exploring new genres. He's exploring tactical shooters. Like I would not never thought Mario and friends to do that. Much less with Ubisoft's Rabbids. That just blows my mind that that even happened. That that's yeah. a thing. That's just zany. Yeah. yeah, it's just zany. Like the Rabbids. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now my pick for most surprising is a little something called the Sexy Brutal which you may or may not have heard of. It's a very unique game. It's a really cool premise. So you're like in this mansion and there's a bunch of people that you basically have to like, you're in this time loop and you have to figure out how to save them from their untimely deaths. It's a little bit kind of like reminds me of Majora's Mask in that time loop, like you repeat it until you actually do something or save someone or change the timeline. Uh, but yeah, it was a surprisingly good game for something I had never heard of before. Uh, so yeah, good game. Check it out if you haven't. Right, so next category is Hardest Game. My pick was a little co-op game called Death Squared. So this is a multiplayer game where you play as like cubicle robots that have to solve puzzles together in different stages. And it's really clever and fun, but it also gets really hard. But it's a lot of fun. Yeah, the puzzles are really hard. Yeah, they get really tricky. The puzzles. Yeah. So my pick is a little game called Tumble Seed, uh, where you play as a little seed, and it's hard. It's it's basically like uh, one of those games where if you die, you lose it all. So it can get really frustrating. You're controlling the floor under the seed as he comes up, and you're trying to avoid all these holes and thorns and all these other bad creatures trying to kill the seed. So it's it was really difficult for me. It's fun, but it's hard. Yeah, so the next category is best story for a Switch game in its launch year. And my pick, it's a little more niche, but point and click fans will really enjoy it. It's called Thimbleweed Park. It's made by the creators of classic LucasArts games like Maniac Mansion 
and the stories about a murder that happens, and these two agents investigate. But then there are other stories, like about this computer programmer, and a clown, and, it, and all their stories intertwine, and it's just a really funny, well-told story with a bunch of funny dialogue, and you have to try to figure out the mystery of Thimbleweed Park and what happened there. So it was really enjoyable for me, and I really love Point and Click, so it was really all about the story. Cool. All right, so my pick for best story. Again, this in terms of storytelling, this is a little non-traditional as well, uh, but The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. So I know in terms of story, it's much more broken up than, yes, we're wearing the shirts. <laughs> uh, it's much more broken up even compared to other Zelda games because you're not just going like from one place to the next, from one cutscene to the next. Everything, all the different cutscenes and memories are scattered everywhere. You can basically find them in any order. And, but the way that they tell the story though, you can take all those scenes and piece them together and still get a pretty comprehensive story out of it. So I thought that was a really unique way uh, to convey their storyline, but it still worked. So I really like that. Okay, now the next category we have is best music. Yeah. So my pick for best music is Super Mario Odyssey. And if you haven't heard that song, well, I don't know where you've been, but that is one of the catchiest songs, Jump Up Superstar. I mean, that gets stuck in my head all the time. And it's in all over all the commercials. They're like people do a musical dance to it. It's amazing. So, yeah, see, he's doing the dance right now. <laughs> he's doing the Mario dance. Let's do the Odyssey. <laughs> so, I mean, that song alone, I think, takes the cake on best music. But then the other music in the other world is also really good. So yeah, great soundtrack, great catchy song, uh, yeah, loved it. My favorite is Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So I really like the original Xenoblade music. And then we had Xenoblade Chronicles X where they were stuck on a different planet, stuck on a different planet. Uh, but Xenoblade Chronicles 2's music is just as good as the first one. It had the same beats, it had the same emotional music, and it fits so well with the story. And I really like the battle themes, it was just great music for RPGs, so I'm really glad that Xenoblade 2 was able to live up to the soundtrack of the Xenoblade series. The next category is the most novel experience you've had on the Switch. So for me, uh, I've played Rocket League, which is, which is car soccer. That's crazy. So it's just really fun to be in this giant field and you're just the car and you're just trying to drive up to the balls bump them and jump into the goal like it's cr it makes no sense but it's a blast to play like literally you can explode and it's awesome and you get to wear mario hats mario yeah. and luigi hats and samus hats yeah so it was it's a really fun game to play multiplayer too my pick for most novel is a little game called snake pass which oh. we actually did a, a short let's yeah. play series on this Short-lived. Um, <laughs> Short-lived, let's play. So it was it's a fun game, but and so it's meant for a one player. So you have a Joy-Con in each hand, and then each controller controls a different aspect of the snake. Only in our let's play, we each had a Joy-Con to control. So everything was even more divided. And that was really hard, let me tell you. It was really hard to manipulate that snake and make him cross all these different obstacles. It was fun, but also pretty frustrating. It's hard enough one player. Yeah. Actually, I'm surprised you didn't pick that for hardest game. Yeah. It's still impossible. It's, yeah. Still an impossible game. <laughs> okay. All right, so next category is best spin-off game. Okay. Okay. And so the my pick for this is Fire Emblem Warriors. Ooh. Yeah, so I'm a fan of the Fire Emblem series. I've played some of the later games like Fire Emblem Awakening, Fates, and I, I really liked Hyrule Warriors, which is another spinoff that was on the Wii U. Uh, so coming to Switch. Yeah, coming to Switch as well. So it was really cool since I'm a fan of Fire Emblem, I like all the characters, to be able to like play them in a big like Dynasty Warriors type, you know, fighting all hordes of enemies. It was pretty cool. And I like seeing all the different characters come together in one game, so yeah, good times. So my favorite spinoff for the Switch is actually Dragon Quest Builders, which is a game I've been playing recently. And yeah, I really like the blend of Minecraft and RPG-like mechanics from Dragon Quest series. Um, it's definitely the most fun I've had playing a Minecraft-type game because you have like a story, you get to build your own town, and it just feels like you have purpose when you are 
playing the game, you know, so as opposed to Minecraft. I mean, uh, you know, Minecraft is a great experience too, but Dragon Quest Builders felt like an adventure of Minecraft. Adventure? An adventure. A Minecraft venture. I like that. Yes. Plus I had Dragon Quest, which is a great series. Yeah. Great RPG series. The next category is best competitive multiplayer game for the Switch. And I'm going to have to go with Splatoon 2. Mm. I put a lot of hours into Splatoon 2. Uh, it's just fun to play online with friends. Uh, shout out if you've ever played Splatoon 2 with me. And it's just, it's, I had a lot more fun than when I played Splatoon 1. Just because it felt like it's the complete experience. More modes, more people playing, more splats. More of what was great about Splatoon 1. Splatfests have been fun uh, and hilarious for me. And also, uh, Salmon Run. Well, Salmon Run is like this like, crazy, horrifying experience where you have to beat the Salmonids and get their eggs. I guess that's more of a co-op part, but the whole experience of Splatoon 2, everything put together is what made it like the best multiplayer game for me. Mm. All right, so my pick for best competitive multiplayer is... Oh, 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 oh. That's right, it's arms. My arm is going way past the screen. You yeah, I, I see, see that. Yeah. yeah, it's actually springing forward. Yeah, it's springing. You just can't see it. Um, so yeah, ARMS is a lot of fun. I really like that, even though, you know, boxing and fighting games aren't really a new thing, the way they implemented this was really clever with everyone having like extendable like arms and crazy themes and colorful costumes and it was just a lot of fun and we got a, a lot of use out of it when we played with some of our friends. So yeah, ARMS was a good time. It's an underrated party hit. Yeah, 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 it's kind of like a party game. I love I, all the characters, too. Yeah, especially because I'm not really good at fighting games, so I can't do any, like, hardcore fighting stuff, but ARMS is sort of accessible enough that I can get into it, too. So I appreciated that. All right. Now, the opposite of competitive, our next category is best co-op game to play together. <laughs> all right, so... My favorite is Sniffer Clips! Cut it out together. together! So we played through the entire series of Sniffer Clips um, in one of our Let's Play series, so definitely check that out. If you haven't, you can see us play through each stage of that game. Um, so yeah, Sniffer Clips, definitely one of the best launch games mm -hmm. on the Switch. It's like, it was so much fun, it was so clever. Unique. It's novel experience. Yeah, very. See, this I could have picked this for most every novel, category too. really. Best story. Yeah, best story, story as well. Clip oh is my amazing. gosh, that Oscar twist at the winning. end. Wow. Yeah. Made me cry. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it was a lot of fun. The puzzles were great, and it was just fun to like laugh together mm -hmm. on that game. Made us laugh a lot. Yeah, definitely. So I could also pick Snipper Clips, but I'm actually gonna pick another game that we really enjoyed together. Overcooked. And Overcooked Special Edition came out in Nintendo Switch, and it was just a blast. Like, uh, playing it in a big group, just all the chaos of trying to cook together. Like, all these cooks in one kitchen. Try, yeah. Someone has to cut, someone has to deliver the food, someone has to, like, fry the food. Like, it, it's just crazy how you have to manage everything. Nothing ever happens the way that you want it to go, because then there's, like, earthquakes and ice, and it's just so madcap. Like, I really enjoyed playing... Uh, overcooked in a group setting. Yeah, it was a... It's fun co-op. It was a super fun game. I didn't know anything about it when we started playing, but then before we knew it, we were kind of obsessed with it. So. And you can play as a panda. Yes, and you can play as a panda. <laughs> so, here it is. But a little, little drum roll. Drum roll. So, the best Nintendo Switch launch year game. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, my favorite game for the Switch has been none other than... Super Mario Odyssey! Yahoo! <laughs> so, it is such a fun game. I love Super Mario 64. I love Mario games in general. And just this took the cake. There were so many moons to grab. The capture mechanic is just crazy. Like, you can do so much with it. So many puzzles, challenges, and new gameplay. And it was just fun to explore all of the new worlds, especially New Donk City. Just an entire section of New Donk City. Uh, culminating in the amazing Jump Up Superstar song. Yeah. It just made me so happy. It's like definitely one of my favorite Mario games, period. And definitely my favorite game for the Nintendo Switch in its first year. What an amazing, mm. what an amazing game to have the first year. All right. Good go, choice. go, Mario. Go, go, Mario. Go, go, Mario. So, very excellent choice. Uh-huh. 
Uh, my choice, which probably won't surprise a lot of people, is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Which, I mean, of course, canonically, it's the game of the year. One game of the year in the Video Game Awards, so I think that is... It's the correct choice, but anyways, I think a lot of people can agree that this is an amazing game. Amazing Zelda game, amazing open world adventure game. Like, you can do anything, you can go anywhere. It's beautiful, it's such a beautiful game. It has good music, I wish there was a little more of the music in the game, but yeah, there's just like so creative and unique, and there's just endless opportunities for exploration, for discovery. It was just amazing. We spent so many hours playing this game together. There's always something new to find. Like there's always another corner of the world that you haven't seen. So yeah, it was just uh, the best game of the year by it, far. It was def it was my runner up, and it yeah. was a great it was a great game to have day one of Switch. Like oh, I was yeah. so excited playing it the first when the Switch first came out. Uh, so many good memories. Yeah, great times. Yeah. So there you have it. Those were our panda picks. Share your picks in the comment section below, and we'd love to read some of your answers in a future video. The games we picked are ones we've played, and since there are hundreds, if not millions, of games on Switch now, we couldn't possibly choose from them all. Feel free to use our same categories, or list your own like favorites by genre. We'd love to hear what you think, so please let us know. And be sure to like this video and hit that subscribe button below for more Nintendo reviews, discussions, and fun panda videos. Thank you so much for watching. We're really glad you spent time with us. Thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. Again, this was Alex, AKA Mr. Panda. And this was Tifa, AKA Crystal Dragon. And until next time, Bye-bye!